Alright, hello everybody, Stuart McAdam here, and in today's video we're going to be doing things um, in a little bit of a different structure, and rather than just discussing a singular like instructional on how to do something in Facebook, or looking at uh, what's been trending recently in Facebook updates with the iOS changes, and helping you with you know, how to set an audience up, how to set an ad up, testing and things. Just going to be looking at a broad number of things, and this is questions which uh, you've asked in the comments section that you've sent in and emailed directly. Uh, you can email me anytime uh, with any questions you might have about Facebook ads and marketing. Uh, info at stuartmcadam.com is the email. And in today's video, we're just going to sort of talk, I guess, quite openly about some of the questions that you've had. And also just a couple of things that have been on my mind recently in regards to digital marketing in general and also just addressing some of your questions. So let's get into it. First question was actually one that somebody had asked through one of the um, freelance platforms called Upwork, which have been on for a while. And they asked, how do you earn a living? Well, it's pretty simple. I work, um, I guess you would say a two-tiered business model. So the first one is I work one-on-one -on -one with my own clients, working sort of in Facebook marketing, Facebook ads, uh, content creation, and those sorts of things. And in the other area, I'm uh, the other tier, I'm working with uh, marketing agencies, um, filling different needs that they may have for client-based work. So that could be things like project management type stuff. It could be uh, working in Facebook ads specifically. And I enjoy working in both because it keeps me exposed to uh, what's going on at the moment. It provides an enormous amount of knowledge and information about uh, how to successfully uh, do well with the various types of online marketing. And as far as my digital marketing skills, which was another question that came in, look, it's primarily in Facebook ads and Facebook marketing. I do have experience working in SEO, and up until about a month and a half ago, I was working on the SEO for a company called Doboats. Com. So they're a company that's based in Taupo that, you know, you can go ride in their dough-shaped, donut-shaped boats uh, along Lake Taupo. So it's quite a novel experience. And I don't normally take on SEO clients, but they're friends, and I thought, let's just go for it. So that's sort of like something I've kind of dabbled in. But Facebook ads, uh, Facebook marketing, content creation, email marketing, other things that I'm most proficient in. And I always try to sort of keep up with any of the updates that are happening on uh, MailChimp and ActiveCampaign. I have used Klaviyo, uh, not the biggest fan of it, but sort of have used it before. It's really just sort of something that I guess comes down to sort of personal preference. Uh, other people prefer to go into areas like uh, copywriting, people may go into website design. I personally, did a video a while ago that was talking about my desire to learn how to do website coding. I'll be honest, I lasted about a month. I just don't think I'm cut out for website coding. Maybe at some point when I've got some free time, I'll try and learn it again. But I mainly enjoy working with Facebook marketing, Facebook ads, email marketing, and always try to keep my copywriting skills sharp as well because if Facebook was to... Uh, go under or something was to happen and people were to abandon the platform uh, like they did with MySpace not so long ago uh, when that was the big thing and then it wasn't. Uh, it's always nice to have a backup to fall on. So that's why I enjoy uh, working in email marketing as well and also uh, having good copywriting skills too so that you know if I can do website copy or advert writing advertising copy, it's still something that I can sort of stay familiar with and stay relevant on and make sure that there is, you know, I guess enough knowledge in the brain to 
understand how to create sharp, um, catchy copy that is going to lead to conversions. And the good thing about that is it doesn't matter what type of platform comes up. Uh, if you can communicate uh, things effectively and sort of really use the written word to sell products and services, then you're never going to go hungry. It's effectively like being a salesperson uh, online. So, yeah, to sort of summarize it, it's Facebook ads, Facebook marketing, email marketing, and content writing, copywriting, whatever you call it. And that kind of sort of pulls over to a question that someone asked a while ago, and that was, can I get good results turning my ads on and off? And that really just depends on what you're selling. Uh, some things obviously are quite seasonal. People run Black Friday specials. People do Queen's Birthday weekend specials. Uh, other people might only be operational at certain seasons of the year. And the answer is you're going to see some level of success possibly, but you're probably not going to enjoy the same level of success um, that you may have because things can change a lot in a season or a period of time. Uh, if you're doing it on a regular basis where you're turning ads on and then 48 hours later you're turning them off, then you're definitely not going to have a good level of success because the Facebook algorithm isn't going to have enough time to accumulate enough information and enough learnings and understand which of your ads are doing well and which ones are resonating with the audience, which ones are giving them the best possible experience. And that's been something which tends to be a bit of a journey. So it's really split into two. Is it one where you're turning the ads on and off frequently for a campaign that could be on and running all the time, or is it based on a seasonal thing? If it's based on a seasonal thing, a seasonal type of uh, business, like you've got a you know, it's a company that sells snow, snow equipment, snowboarding equipment, and and so on, and that sort of period only lasts for five months of the year. Then you really just need to make sure that you've got a solid proof of concept, and you've got ad copy that's bulletproof. Because if things change over a period of time and you've got new products rolling out, then it's going to be a bit of a challenge. But if it's something that you know meets a regular need, then you might be okay. Um, as far as Having ads turning on and off for a company that can do evergreen products and promotions, look, best to just avoid it. Easiest to, if, at the very least, let ads run for a week. And only then, if they're still underperforming, then just leave them, let, uh, let them rest peacefully. But, yeah, my advice would be sort of look at the two things there. And... Uh, it's, the, it's the same question again, are Apple iOS changes going to affect my business? And I quite like that graphic there because it really is a very unique and interesting battle. And after reviewing it and after working with clients to make changes that need to be made, do I think it's going to affect small businesses in the way Facebook says it has? Probably not. There just doesn't seem to be that many small businesses out there that, for example, would have more than eight custom conversions tracking on their website. And my feeling is as well is that Facebook may get to a point where it might not function properly on an Apple phone with iOS 14 changes unless people opt into getting their information tracked, which, you know, depending on what side of the fence you sit on, could be a good thing or could be a bad thing. Uh, I don't think it's going to affect small businesses. I've just been keeping a very close eye on a couple of uh, client accounts that I've been working on recently, and it doesn't seem to have affected anything so far. Maybe that will change if I come on with a client who maybe had multiple custom conversions, but if you think about just the custom conversion, it's like the conversions that you can track at the moment. Add to cart, uh, initiate checkout, uh, purchase, abandon cart, uh, leave, strategy session booked, uh, webinar sign up. That's seven custom conversions right there that would pretty much cover almost anything that most 
people who are selling products online from something small to something big uh, would have. So if you're going over eight, then there's a good chance that your business might be trying to do too many things at once, which is a bit of an interesting one and maybe worth sort of looking at. I think the only other one that probably wasn't included there was like a sign up to a subscription list or subscription uh, product. And, you know, that gives you eight, which is really more than enough. And if you need to start simplifying it, then you need to start simplifying it. The best thing you can actually do right now is look at ways of verifying your business domain uh, through Facebook. So if you've got, um, you know, just the ability to pay send code to your developer to place it on your website to just verify your domain, to do, do it through DNS or, you know, whatever option you want to take, it's, it's entirely up to you. It really just depends on what you prefer to do. And that sort of brings something more interesting up, which is I'm going to have a look at a guy called Elric Heck's YouTube course uh, in May. I know I've already got Traffic and Funnels and I've got Rudy Marwa's course as well, but Elric is someone who has interested me for a while. I've looked at his ads for ages and even though I've already bought his course, his ads still seem to be served to me, which is rather interesting. So um, I've kind of just taken the time to watch the different variations that he's got out there. And his basic premise is that Facebook ads are killing your business because you pay per impression. And YouTube ads is obviously his game. It's something that he's built his whole business model around. He's got an established team of people. And I just joined his uh, group the other day and got a message from one of the people that works for him who was a very nice fellow. So it's, I think it's a three hour training. It cost 47 US dollars. So whether or not that's something that's going to be sort of useful or relevant, I don't know. I've had a desire to learn YouTube ads for a while. I tried some YouTube advertising on my business account last year and got completely confused. So it would be very interesting to have a look there. Uh, one other guy who I've wanted to look at for a while is John Penderfee. Now he's somebody who is um, also built a business teaching people sort of like YouTube ads training and you know he's him and Elric are probably the ones whose ads I see more than anybody else. John's kind of scaled back just a little bit but Elric sort of still going full throttle uh, for my attention even though I've got his $47 course and um, you know it's it's just going to be interesting to unlock the secrets of YouTube advertising. I know at the moment that they don't charge you if someone doesn't if someone skips the ad after you know before 30 seconds. But my suspicion is that moving forward at some point, I think YouTube might realize that they're losing some good advertising dollars uh, there in between and might sort of move that back to 15 seconds or maybe even five. I don't know. I'm sort of just speculating here and um, you know, thinking just sort of like what could be the possible things that YouTube might change in the future. And I can see that being one of them. Uh, when I first started working in Facebook ads, it was a very different platform and the you know, the reach and engagement that you had when you ran ads was so incredibly good. I remember having a very broad-based outreach for a client called Marathon World Travel, and we managed to get a click-through rate at one stage of 12.4% on an ad that was for the Paris Marathon, I believe. And I thought to myself, well, wow, that's sort of quite interesting. So... You know, now you sort of you'd run a similar ad like that, you'd be lucky to sort of get a click through rate of about four percent. So it's just sort of the competition's got much steeper and much more intense. So, you know, Alrick's made the big claim that YouTube advertising platforms wide open. John Pemberthy's made that claim as well. So maybe that'll be something that I'll test uh, alongside sort of my some Facebook ads in the future. Uh, somebody asked a while ago, um, and I'll just bring the next question up, um, because it kind of relates to this in, in, a, in a small way. 
uh, they asked, like, do you use Facebook ads to promote your own business? And the answer is an aspect of it I do because the only YouTube ad promotion or only Facebook ads promotions I've been running recently is to promote my YouTube videos. So had uh, the course reviews that we've done, there have been the the reviews um, that are going to come up, we're going to give those a bit of promotional push, we've been doing Facebook tutorials, we're doing the um, some of the older videos that um, are on this channel about sort of how to set up an audience, Facebook marketing tips and so on. So that is something that has been done. I'm also going to run a small test at some point to um, using different ad copy variations and maybe different sort of ad set targeting versus campaign budget optimization uh, to see how effective uh, that is with getting leads and getting sort of strategy sessions and that sort of thing booked. So I've had a look at a request from someone who sort of had a look at Alex Becker's sort of pitch for having a successful business, like, you know, businesses that do ads in certain ways and really crush it, and that's to sort of booking strategy calls, and that's sort of taking them to what is initially a high-ticket offer, but then sort of weaves down to a low-ticket offer, and then sort of can get people into the funnel that way. So that'll be interesting to sort of have a look at. So one of the biggest things that I've kind of got on my to-do list when it comes to personal development is having a look at Sam Oven's course, Consulting Accelerator, again. It was about three years ago that I first did the course, uh, his course, and it was great. It was very knowledgeable, a very knowledgeable guy, very informative, and got a great blueprint to help you uh, get your own business up and going off the ground. And certainly has some very good training on Facebook ads as well. And one of the things that I personally think would be an absolute uh, gold mine if Sam was to do it, is if he put out a training video, whether it was on his website, where it was done and put in Consulting Accelerator or Up Level Consulting or whatever course it is, if he did one on the Apple iOS changes and everything you've got to be aware of and how to algorithm proof your ads, then you'd be on an unbelievable, um, he'd be on a un pretty unbelievable growth trajectory. And whether that's something he wants or not, I don't know. Um, all I can say is that's something that many people have been trending uh, and asking questions about recently. So it'll be interesting to see that. And I'm also going to sort of go through uh, some of the planning stages that he has as well in this course about how to build out an effective business too. So that will all be very interesting. And next thing as well is, this was just a question that came up out of the blue. And someone asked, you know, what do you think is the most useless measurement metric Facebook ads has? And for my money, I think it's the quality, engagement, and conversion rate rankings um, in Facebook ad. I just can't stand them. I think it's a useless uh, indicator of success because you could have something that is on by these metrics uh, standards, uh, very low quality ad, uh, low conversion ranking, but if you to actually crunch through the numbers, you can see that it's actually converting and performing quite well and far above the standards which you had expected. And it could have an engagement rate at a level which is much higher than what you normally have, but it says uh, sort of average or below average. And then in the quality ranking, you might put together a very, you know, high quality thumbnail or high quality picture that Facebook deems as below average and bottom 35%, bottom 10%. You can see some of the numbers right here. This is for ads that I ran recently. And yet, you know, despite being in the bottom 20% of quality, it was had a conversion and engagement rate that was so far above anything else I expected. It, it's just such a useless indicator to have something like that. So that's sort of like something that's, yeah, it kind of just bugs me that Facebook does have those quality metrics there because it does freak and annoy people uh, to their utmost degree. 
probably freaks them out a lot more if they see a low quality score um, or low conversion ranking. The biggest thing that you need to just sort of measure um, with your Facebook ads is look at the quality of the traffic that's going through to your website, look at the quality of leads that you're getting, look at the number of um, sort of strategy sessions that you book or the number of sales that you produce uh, from the platform and have a look at what the lifetime value of those customers are. And that's sort of like the real big indicators and, and measuring sticks that you ought to be using rather than having a look at these uh, rather useless and ineffective uh, measuring sticks, which is quality ranking, engagement rate ranking, and conversion rate ranking. So in terms of just coming back to uh, here, um, one of the exciting projects that I've got uh, coming up next month is I'm going to be testing um, this theory right here. Can you get good results turning your ads on and off? So I'm going to actually look at maybe setting up two campaigns and having one where I'm constantly turning, I'm turning the ads on and off after a set period of time. Maybe say like turn them off just before we go to bed and turn them back on in the morning. And then just letting the other campaign run throughout the day. So obviously giving us a bigger budget towards uh, the campaign that is uh, going to be turned off and slightly smaller one for the other one, but having the same ads and the same targeting and whatnot and see how effective that is because there's been some really positive feedback so far from you. So thank you so much uh, for everybody who had a look at the tests and looked at the ads and uh, that we tested and so on. If you aren't familiar with them, just go type in Stuart McAdam, long copy, short copy, uh, in, in, into the YouTube search bar and you'll see one of the videos that I put together which was testing Facebook ad copy variations uh, in order to determine what, which one was the most effective for the ads. And also got a lot of um, a lot of client work coming up in the next month. It's going to be a pretty exciting month once again, especially with the iOS changes. Um, working with quite a few international clients again, picked up quite a bit of email marketing work that has been quite exciting to sort of look at in a bit more detail, like you know using MailChimp's new interface. Uh, of which there has been a request from someone to do a video tutorial on how to use the MailChimp one there, but I'm sorry guys, like at the moment I've kind of got to just focus the channel primarily on uh, Facebook marketing and Facebook ads. Um, I will at some point do a MailChimp tutorial. Uh, it will be a basic one to sort of get you going and get you started, but yeah, for the time being, it's just going to be around Facebook ads and Facebook marketing because there's so many different things going on and happening at the moment. And uh, there's been there's been there was a question about how to use the Instagram interface on the Facebook business suite. So I'm going to have to do a video on that one as well at some point. So it's just a lot of requests to do different things that have been piling up uh, more and more. So. That's been something which has obviously sort of been on the mind now is like rather than having a look through um, endless forums and endless chats, there's actually more and more requests from people uh, that are coming directly through LinkedIn, uh, Facebook, through email, uh, in the comments section, uh, in the YouTube videos. So that's going to be really interesting and obviously got to get through uh, all these people's courses as well. Like, you know, there's Traffic and Funnels, uh, Taylor Welch and uh, his business partner, I think it's the same as Chris, uh, their course on Facebook advertising, there's the Rudy Marlowe's course, there's now Alric's course, so yeah, quite a lot of things to get through, so might have to, um, yeah, just hold fire on, on buying any more courses for the time being and trying to get through those ones in May. If you haven't seen uh, the review that Hannah's done on Jordan Flatten's course, uh, Learn Ads. I'd highly recommend that. It's a pretty good entry-level course. It focuses specifically on Facebook advertising. And it's not a course that's going to break the bank. It's only 19 US dollars. So 
know, it's definitely worth having a look at if you're not too familiar with social media marketing, or you could just watch some of the videos that I've put together here on my channel. Uh, Jordan Platten's quite an interesting fellow as well. I would personally find it fascinating to talk to a guy like him and ask what his what he tests when he launches a campaign for a client based on, let's say, e-commerce or based on uh, if he was working with a client in real estate that's looking to get more leads. I'd be very interested to know and I'd be more than happy to talk with him on, you know, on the record or off the record about how we'd go about doing that because he seems to be someone who's generated um, unbelievable success um, with Facebook advertising and Facebook marketing and as Hannah said in a video, he definitely is the envy of, um, of Facebook marketers on YouTube. Like if you type in Facebook ads 2021, like his video is, is number one or it was the last time I checked it. So it'll be very intriguing to see how, what his setup and approach is. And that's something which I've been reflecting on quite a bit recently as well is would I, how much would I be prepared to pay a professional Facebook marketer for one hour of their time for them to screen share with me the exact pro approach that they use to set up client-based ads, not tutorials, but like actual client-based uh, ads and have a look behind the curtain on how the campaigns perform, where the most success is enjoyed. A lot of them emphasize testing, but never actually sort of show that information and that's something which I'm also going to be quite interested to sort of share with you a little bit more is just these tests that we are going to be running in the next couple of months uh, with, with my money on whether um, it's more effective to use an image or a video or a carousel ad if it's got the exact same message and whether you're going to be able to you know reach more people who will get more leads or conversions or whatever it may be and one of the questions that seems to sort of prop up more is like you know what should the starting point be for budget and I generally tend to be conservative but you know someone's asked if I could test you know promoting uh, ads at a hundred dollars a day I thought yeah maybe you'll find a sponsor for that one <laughs> uh, maybe I'll put that out there. Uh, if you if you are wanting some publicity for your business, uh, some free branding on a channel which is related to Facebook ads and marketing, and you'd like to put your business forward for testing uh, with ads of a five hundred dollar budget running at a hundred dollars a day, then yeah, leave a comment below or send me an email. Uh, it would be very interesting to see if anyone does come forward um, and, and accept the challenge. Uh, but that's something which really starts and finishes with the goals and objectives that people have because some industries are more, more than willing to, to lose money on acquiring a client than they are, than, than others are. Like if you look at... Uh, if someone's selling a ten thousand dollar course, you could pay up to a thousand dollars acquiring a client. Um, you're not going to want to be paying twelve thousand dollars to get them sold on a, on a ten thousand dollar course if that's all they're ever going to buy, unless you have something else. Um, whereas, then if you spend a hundred dollars to get a client on subscription for like a uh, you know, household appliances or clothing items or breakfast cereals or that sort of thing, or coffee mugs, coffee, uh, then maybe it is worth investing, um, you know, five times what they'd buy, pay on their initial purchase. So, you know, ROAS is 0 0.2, but the lifetime value for that client is infinitely greater. Maybe it is worth um, spending uh, more than and, and spending a higher budget every day so you can reach you know, as many people as you possibly can with your initial launch and then you can just turn the ads off and focus on nurturing uh, those customers uh, over a long period of time and have your whole process of 
running on autopilot. So that's just a couple of my thoughts here, guys. Um, thank you so much for watching the video.